and we're live! And I'm banned in the corner. <laughs> that was my best attempt at a game show host impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> or like a like a Friday night you like Van, a comedian Van impersonation. Van every cosplay. <laughs> Vanna, Vanna. Anyways, guys, welcome to Wednesdays with Springfield Leather. Is it Wednesday already? It is Wednesday already. Thank goodness, because this week needs to be over already. <laughs> Can I it's join been you a lot today? of fun. Hey, look who's uh, here. We're happy that you did. We saved you a spot. We did. I appreciate it. We that. got you the middle. It's the most prominent spot. I am the middle child. Mm. And I'm the last. So Are you the oldest? Go. No. Dang. I got Chucks. Story. <laughs> He's got a story, guys. I was born in 1950, which is the middle of the century. It sure is. Smack dab. I was a middle child. I was born in Wichita, Kansas, which is... No, I was born here. But I lived in Wichita, Kansas, which is the middle of the country. Wow. I was born in June, which is the middle of the year. <laughs> On the 14th, which is the middle of the month. <laughs> then he is... The middle. I'm the middle, but I'm in the corner today. <laughs> well, wow, Denny. That I'm is done. that is so in the middle. <laughs> At what age did, did that all settle onto you? Oh, uh, when I was middle age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. That's wow. Good stuff. I'm, I'm blown away right now. That's a lot of life events to yeah. coalesce at once. Really? And this is not scripted. No, none of this is ever scripted. I've <laughs> never heard it <laughs> at all. Yeah. We used to try sometimes with Kevin and Rusty specifically. We never tried to script ourselves because that would, why, what's the point of that? But with them, you know. Yeah, I don't think anybody thought this was scripted. <laughs> <laughs> we could just be that charismatic. Hey, look at all these tools you got laid out. Oh, look how beautiful this table is. It is so organized today because that's my one talent. So in life. much different. Than hit, what camera, I hit camera four <laughs> over there, Abigail. Look at it. Oh wow! Look at that. We so we've got a strap cutter just in case I need to narrow down one of these strips, which I will. I'm going to use it. We've got our rivet setter, um, a stitching chisel. We've got some in punches, some oblong punches. Our cutting utensils just in case we need them. Denny brought me some scissors, so we'll just put that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an edge beveler. We've got a couple different sizes of hole punches that we will be using today. I've got this French edger so that I can thin down some of the ends of these strips so when I set my rivets, it's not a huge chunky mess. Um, our hardware, stitching supplies, and then setting tools and some measuring thing. So, and then some leather, obviously, because that's what we do here. What are we making? Apparently some strips. <laughs> no. So today we figured we're going to do... Just some simple camera straps. Um, these will all be wrist style camera mm -hmm. straps. Um, so we've got three different versions. One of those, you know, if we've got enough time, I've got kind of two different versions of one of them. Um, but we're just going to be making three different styles of some simple camera straps that you could use. Just we don't have a pattern. We we found we went and looked at some pictures of stuff and found some stuff that we liked and we modified it a little bit. But this is what leather crafting is, and so we want to give you guys a chance to break out of whatever mold you might be in. And if you don't want to, then Denny's here to answer your tooling questions. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I'm photography observing. is really... Oh, okay. yeah. Observing tooling okay. questions. He is. We said that he's supervising the, the children today. <laughs> well, we <laughs> Making got, sure we stay on task we got here. four things we should do, so we should probably get started. We, yeah. It's a, you know, an hour goes by really quickly when you just talk a lot. Right. All right. So we're going to start here with this first one. So I've got a three quarter inch um, strip out of the natural harness leather, which is Denny used it a couple videos back to make some um, hip, harness hip, yeah, hip, uh, horse uh, stuff. And yeah. so we use remember, guys, whenever he uh, riveted that clip and D on backwards to his back flank to his back flank. Well, we cut that up because it was still just sitting over there <laughs> in his stash of. I was Failed thinking project. it might heal itself out. <laughs> we cut it up anyway. and utilize it. Yeah, so we cut it up into this awesome three-quarter inch strip. Let me just make sure I have that right. Yes, so the three-quarter inch, and then we split it down to about eight ounce, I think. Um, so this one is going to be really very, very simple. We're going to have one folded end um, that will hook onto a key ring. Now, when we were looking all of this up, I don't know if our hardware, or at least the key ring is 
specifically correct to what you what you might use. It looks like a lot of them are um, significantly smaller. And I looked over on our bead side and we used to have like a 10 millimeter mm -hmm. tiny key ring, but I think it was just some that we got in a purchase and we don't have any of those. So I'm just using a regular one inch key ring, which should fit through the little hole. Yep. Um, it's just not, I don't know. Our cameras here have a little triangle piece that are on it. So yeah. at one point we'll be down to three cameras and we'll bring one over and we can put straps on. Yeah, we can just hook some straps. Once we get done. So this will be riveted on to, oh no, I'm sorry. This is actually for the other ones. So this particular strap is going to have um, just a three quarter inch trigger snap. So this will be riveted on to one end or sewn on or however I feel like doing it today. I'm just gonna, I've had a lot of coffee this morning. And then this side will be looped around. <laughs> and fold it back and then either sewn or riveted here. So you'll basically have a strap that's adjustable and then this end will go onto the camera. So, so then if you drop your camera, it tightens up around your wrist. Exactly, exactly. So we're just gonna start out. Tony, how long do you think this one needs to be? So if we've got... How big you wanna make your turn back? Exactly, so if we're gonna do... I'd only want it maybe... This guy. Here, let's our do this. Our best eye is our measurement. Yeah, so let's... So this is hooked to the camera, and then this comes around, and then folds back on itself. So how long do you think, like that? So how much give do you want to give yourself? Maybe maybe go to, all the way to ten with that part. Let 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 out some tension like that. There you go. Okay. So that's where we're gonna be. I'm gonna cut it off right about here. That's exact, precise measurements. <laughs> Very precise. So when you're making templates and stuff like that, that's basically how you have to start measuring, or if you use it out of paper and do paper stuff. Yeah. So we've got about 22 inches here from tip to tip is the total length of our strap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and punch my ends. So I've got my little three quarter inch and I just grabbed an English tip punch um, for the ends today. Did you notice that Abigail come over here and measure how high her table was? Someone asked how no, tall the table was. I figured that's probably what it was. I think that's the first time we've had the question is how tall our mm -hmm. table is. I think it's like a little over. Standard table, I don't know what you've got, but the standard table is about 38, 39 inches. And it depends. If you're really short, shorter table. Or a, or a stool. Or a stool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with this one, yeah. we're just going to bevel it. Inches. You got a camera change over there? Yeah. Like this. Um, and so with this, I chose a pretty wide bevel because the leather is still pretty heavy, but I want it to feel really good when you're gripping it. So we don't want that, that sharp edge. So I'm taking off quite a bit here. Denny, did you do anything fun this weekend? Well, I was just getting ready to comment on that. <laughs> If any of you are in our area, you need to enter a project in the fair next year. <laughs> next year. <laughs> next Remember year. this for it's too next, late this year. next, what is it, June? Yes, I believe it's sometime in June. But uh, they asked me to be a judge for the Leathercraft uh, projects at the fair this year. And I went over there yesterday to judge. I was all prepared to spend the afternoon. <laughs> it took about 15 minutes. <laughs> There were there were like twenty or twenty five entries, and there were almost that many uh, categories. Categories, and so everyone got a blue ribbon. I hope they're all happy. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys need to give them some competition next year. Well, if you're in Southwest Missouri, the the Ozarks Empire the Ozarks um, Empire Fair. Yeah, the Ozarks Empire Fair has a. I mean, it's a competition of all sorts of things. Yeah, oh yeah, there's all sorts of crafts. There's fruits and vegetables and sewing quilts. Fruits and vegetables? Yes, yeah. If you you can enter tomato, your fruits you and... enter it in the fair. People used to do that. They used to make pickles and everything. I don't know if they've still got that or not. But to, Yeah, the fair used to be... That's what it used to be about. Everybody would come and show you what they could do. Nice. So I'm just using uh, one of Denny's lovely French edgers here to thin down the turn back end so it's not so heavy. I did some camera adjusting, so. I, no, you're good. And I turned on the picture in picture. 
Oh. I forgot to turn that on. People said they liked it. I'm glad you're listening to the people. And I don't listen to very many people. But you people, he listens to. Lucky Whoop, you. There we are. So we've got, I kind of skived it back a little bit farther than where my turn is here. So that I have a nice thin turn. Okay, so that ends done. I'll do the same thing on this end. So we're basically making a pair of reins. Pair Just of split little, reins. Little mini reins. A really short pair. Yeah, it's for a mini horse. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. This one needs to come back farther because this goes all the way around the strap on the other side. You know what I think a good project might be one of these days is uh, I'll bring one of those uh, safety bevelers over here. Mm. Chevy guys, uh, those work really good to bevel the end of a strap like that, to thin it down. Or the safety beveler? Uh -huh. To keep things safe? That's yeah, not so safe. Oh. They say. <laughs> not so That's safe. That's what they call it. They're safe by calling it that. <laughs> They're trying to keep themselves safe. Yeah. Abigail, what's Chevy guy up to? You said he quoted you, you people. And then he said, excuse me, we are chat. <laughs> we are chat. <laughs> I'm not you that guys. good with the internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Trim off your fuzzies. Yeah. And you beveled both sides of it, didn't you? I did. Makes yeah, it nice to you, fit on your hand. Yeah, it makes it just a good feel so that you don't have those hard mm -hmm. square edges going around. So I'm actually going to use our little thing over here. I'm going to put some gum drag. This is the easiest. This is really the easiest thing. If you've got a kid that's looking to get into some camera stuff and he wants to do a little leather work or you just, you know, you're getting into some camera stuff and you want to do a little leather work. Or if you just want to make camera straps or somebody says hey can you make a camera strap yeah, yeah like i'm just gonna gum drag everything get it get it there's other things you could use that strap for too i'm sure you could also anything you want to connect to your wrist yeah, anything you want to hang around with <laughs> you could probably use it as an anklet well that'd be weird. put your put your ball on there and then <laughs> like a leather chain ball and ball and leather chain Going down a weird road today. A ball and strap. A ball and strap. <laughs> and I'm just going to gum drag the full back so that it just slicks everything down. Since it's split, the back no longer has that uh, wax on it. So you know what? We're just going to gum Normally drag Normally Denny crafts and you do the edges. And now you're going to do the crafting and the edging? I'm going to, yeah. Look okay. at I'm going to, I'm just going to do it all. I'll stand I don't here need you guys. And, I'll stand here and make <laughs> dumb jokes like leather balls and chains. <laughs> I mean, that's really all he does anyway. So. True that. I just do it <laughs> off camera. <laughs> does it from the they side. Him for no, they didn't. $3.18 an hour. I got to <laughs> talk to <laughs> about that raise. <laughs> that raise you got. I need, yeah, to, get, yeah. I need to get fixed in that. Yeah. Who else just loves gum tracks? Does anybody I else love just the smell of it. use it for <laughs> everything? Does gum track work on oil tan? No, but I'm still going to try to use it because it smells delicious. Gum track don't eat work it. better than this, than uh, most stuff on this. All right. On oil pan. I'm gonna use these little burnishing wheels we got over here. Oh, I gotta switch a camera though. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. This needs to be not a table right here. Maybe. Needs to be just angled right on the corner. That way, you know, need a little stand. Here. Yeah. Well, we could get a Cobra burnisher in here, but I don't think Rusty would let me have one. <laughs> so you haven't learned yet. You aren't supposed to ask. Just I do don't it. ask for most stuff, but I know. <laughs> I just, limit. I yeah, I'm pretty good at asking for forgiveness. <laughs> I know I know my limits are a little far on that one. What are you guys doing with that Cobra burnisher in here? Uh, using it. A customer had a question about it, so we did a video with it. And it just never ended up back out of here. Yeah. It got too big for it, Bridget. <laughs>
Yeah, this is awful. This is awful. I mean, I could do it with a piece of canvas. You can move on to the next one. Oh, trust me, you're gonna you're gonna be burnishing some stuff. We. Really, I just put a lot of gum drag on here, so it's pretty wet. <laughs> Are you going to cut this strap down too? Yeah, yeah, that one I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to, we'll make it narrower. Because it's oh. pretty wide. Yeah. All right. So now we've just got a nice beveled strap. It's all gum track. It feels really good. Like I said, this is really easy. I'm going to finish this in like two seconds. Okay. So let's I'm see here. So this, this is my farther back. Yes. So this side. We're going to put our little clasp on here, fold it over like that. Going to, I'm just, just going to sew this. I'm just going to rivet it. I figured we'd make it to that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you got your big mouth yeah. over there. So we're just going to do, I've got the punch with no name. Eighth inch. That's what so, I call everything. It's, it's, an it's an eighth of an inch. It's going to be great. Right there. Eyeball center. We talked about that. Your eyes being your best measuring device. That's right. what, what, what were we doing yesterday? Or today? I don't, measuring something. What were we doing? What were, we were doing something. Sorry. What happened? Oh. Yeah, the camera three is on the burnisher now. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? No, I'm I'm actually gonna use this. Oh, just I'm, mash it flat. Well, the, okay. Sometimes, you know, no the times. The hardware. Just mash the rivet flat. And then my fingers. You know, I like I like my fingers. Well, hit the rivet and not your fingers. See, look how. Oh, you hit it. Not no. in the center of it. Uh, I think I got the wrong cap. Anyways! One end done. Right. Yeah. And so then this end folds around here, comes back, and then we'll, well just isn't that cool? rivet that. I was wondering what you were doing. Now I, now I can see it. I can visualize it now. Now he understands. That's why you're, you're in here learning more, Denny. Yeah. <laughs> I might have should have done. Might have should have. Mm -hmm. Like a cut of water? Mm hmm. Right, there you go, Adam. Do you like that? Yeah, like I'm trying to learn. So pretty. They were looking right at the, kind of the top it. of it. Hold it back around. I love that. This is so like the natural the bench thing that you wanted. Really you oh, now you're using big ones. Nope, I shouldn't do that. And it's not going to match. I got two of them right there for you. Now I'm going to use them. <laughs> when she said she was going to do this by herself, we were just going to stay in here. She I wasn't, wasn't lying. lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need your help. I already got two for myself. <laughs> gonna... Okay, my bad, Liz. We're going to use the rivets that are on the back side here. There we go. You thought you had a rivet that flew out <laughs> of the like crap. So there is. That's pretty cool. That's, and that's all she wrote, guys. That's one down. What's what's our time? What do we got? Uh, what, you, 19 minutes. We talked for about four. Okay. So 15 minutes to make one. So there's one. All right, Tony. All right, Liz. So this strip, I figured we'd probably take it down. What is it now? Just like an inch. Yeah. So we yeah. got a one inch strip. That's a little wide. What do we say? Like a five eighth. Okay. Okay. So handy dandy strap cutter. It's already set at five eighths because one of these other ones over here is five eighths. And you got a little piece. Here. I do. So let me go ahead and then you can start because this is our keeper. So this one just folds in half. Um, and then we will hand sew this one. So why don't you go ahead and bevel and start burnishing those edges for our keeper? I would if you, oh, there it is. 
Do you want me to use a three or you may use uh, a three? That one might be a little bit big because it's quite a bit thinner. And then we're going to take this one down. So this morning for our office, we had a little um, a little office training meeting and the they all learned how to use lace cutters of different kinds. So we used like the plastic lace cutter, we used the Australian strander, and then we used um, one that I actually didn't know that we sold. And I don't know how I didn't know that we sold this. I don't know either. I've been here for a decade. And people probably call you on the phone and ask questions. Yeah. But the Osborne makes a lace cutter um, that is, number one, terrifying. So if you cut yourself easily, it's probably not the lace cutter for you. But <laughs> It's not a safety cutter. No, the blade <laughs> is hanging out everywhere. It, it, it's just like their draw gauge. So there's just this, there's, um, it almost looks like an X-Acto knife, but just the blade is like two inches long on the top of it. And then it sets inside the aluminum cylinder that you set at whatever width you want to cut your your lace at um but it works kind of like the plastic lace maker just you can actually set widths and cut maybe a little bit yeah. more exact lace um so we learned about that one today and denny was kind enough to strop that for us after the class so that we could actually attempt to use it because it, <laughs> it needed to be sharpened a little bit there we go but that was, that was a good class. Everybody in the office was quite excited. So if anybody has any questions about there, about late, making lace, they can help you now. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They're pros. All right. So Tony is gum tracking our keeper here. And then we'll have to cut it down once we know where we're at. So this, this guy is just a wrist strap and then the keeper is what will tighten it up on your wrist so that it won't fall off. Mm -hmm. They want uh, an estimate of a selling price for the, strap, the first strap you need. Uh, I think when I was looking and the similar styles of that on, on Etsy or other little shop things were like 25 bucks, 30 bucks. I mean, what's your time worth? How much did it take? How long did you stay away from your family or whatever you were doing? Don't cut yourself short. If you sell yourself short, then you're just devaluing your product and yourself. Yeah. And I mean, the whole industry. <laughs> what do you, what do we what do we have in there? And the whole industry, exactly. Like what what do we have? Maybe a dollar like in dollar, leather. Yeah, maybe. Two pennies in rivets and a dollar in uh, a, mm -hmm. a snap or a clip. Yeah. Trigger. Say say three dollars even got in it. Even if you said you had five dollars in it and you're. Also, um, on the split, Dean Terry wanted to let Denny know this weekend fly fishing expo in Fall Park, Hawaiian Club Village. Denny, fly what? fishing expo. What are we doing on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a. Uh... Put your hand in there. Is that is that a good sign? Yep. Okay. That, that would work for me. Okay. We're doing a, a fly wallet or a yep a, a fly. fly book. I guess mm -hmm. I'm pretty tall. Just to, to put so we'll be all ready for that. Is that this weekend, Abigail, or was it last weekend? The Hollister Expo. This, weekend. this coming weekend? I would I'm like to go, but I think I'm tied up. Well, shucks. Look at that. I have a hair I appointment on Saturday. Up. You might be locked up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. That's beautiful. Okay, so I'm actually going to have you sew this. Um, Do you mean to bevel that up? And Yeah, I was going to... Let's see here. So this is going to fold back and in. So if we make the keeper, it's just going to go over the two, right? It just needs to cinch down over the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're going to put your ring inside there. Yeah. So we just need to be, like if you did that, we could sew that up. Does that look good? Yeah. Where's, so the, cut that. where's the third piece go on that? It just goes in between. Oh, you come back in between. We're going to skive it down a little bit. Yeah. Sandwich it in there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So you want to cut that there and then we'll sew up that keeper. All right. So this one is just a pretty simple wrist strap, which you can make this for purses or little clutch bags. So basically, we just have five eighths sure. piece of leather. It's going to fold back on itself. This key ring, we're going to use the key ring. Is going to be housed at the bottom here with this piece of leather coming down so that it won't go up. And then we're just going to sew this and have that keeper so that whenever it's on your wrist, you can snug it up so it doesn't fall off of your wrist. But that's going to be basically where we're at there. 
how much room let's see here let's give ourselves and really for this part like the the amount of room that you leave above the key ring is just going to be determined by like how fancy of stitching like do you want to do an inch of fun stitching or do you just want to do like a couple lashes because you can make it really as short or as long as you want with this section so we're just going to go up about an inch so let's see here Woo! as i throw my rivets all the way across the table let me tidy this up your tape is still tidier than when I'm here. <laughs> Put that <list> <laughs> you replace all your tools where you have them. I try. Look at that. Okay. So grand total length on this guy is just about 18 inches. And really, I'm going to leave all of my ends square. Well, no, I will cut... I'm going to cut a little end on this one because this one will show. Tony, you left me. Yeah, sorry. Abigail broke it. So, speaking of Legos. <laughs> That's what you were Legos, talking you about. You can't say speaking of when you just bring it up. <laughs> Hey, I can story about Lego. How about we start there? <sighs> so, um, Chris and I have been working on a Mickey and Minnie set. And I think that it's appropriate because somebody that we all know and put up with is going to Disney World next week. Hey, <laughs> That would be Tony. Um, but so we built uh, Mickey and Minnie figures. And they're like this tall. Wow. They're almost a foot tall. So they got, the, I don't know, we finished the head construction on them last night, and it was just a lot of fun. I've always wondered, how did they do all the curves, the rounded parts, like on their face? Or well, so they you, square you, face? <laughs> you build this internal, like, box that's got pegs, like the Lego pegs on the outside, so that then you can clip on, like, little facial features, and then you'll build, like, the cheeks that curve with, like, the little rampy parts that they make. I don't know the technical names for Lego well, pieces. Well, are the pieces actually curved? Yeah. Are they straight, and you just do them on a contour? No, they do have some curved pieces, so they've, they've got some, like, ramped wedges that will, like, you build up on the bottom. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so you can't have these little contoured sections, or they have some new pieces that I've never seen before, and they were, like, like quarter circles that stood up probably an inch so it was like this big chunky quarter circle like if you took the earth and you chopped it into into sections like one of those pieces of pie was just a whole piece that you would put on to like create like the the head and the cheeks so wow. yeah it was a lot of fun wow. there they were really cute i'm excited got a question up there is it about legos no my question is, when using water, the leather shrinks along the length of the leather. Knowing that I put a tape on the back, what should I do? Uh, I mean, taping is what we typically do to yeah. prevent as much stretch as possible. I, I've not never shrinking. Known leather to actually shrink, but to, I'm sure it could draw up a bit. Typically, when we are, are you going to finish that keeper? Uh, I don't remember which end you wanted. I have one that's a little shorter and one that's a little longer. Do you know which one you wanted? Hang on. <laughs> um. That one's perfect. So just butt that one up. Okay. <laughs> Relax! That's what he says. Thanks, Sketch. Um, back to Mohammed's question. I typically we are putting tape on the back of a piece of leather to prevent stretch, not yeah. shrinkage. Yeah. I've never known leather to shrink, but to, I guess it could a bit. But to just stretch it back out. I mean, leather is pretty forgiving that way. What is happening? Um, they're moving wiring around. <laughs> They're probably wonder, drilling into that hole right there. I wonder if we can not do that. 
Uh, yeah. I was going to poke holes in this, but I only got a four prong. I don't want all four prongs. There you go. Do it like that. Just yep. hang it off the edge. That's ingenuity right there. At its finest. I'll see I'm going to put two little... What do you think about that? Yeah. I think they're done. Oh, that was short and sweet. I mean, I stopped Andrew from taking down that wall like 30 minutes ago. So. <laughs> We've only the minor construction here. We've only been trying to get it down for three weeks. Oh, for like three years. For three years. Okay, well. I was just giving him a little. I'm moving my work area next week. Yeah, we're What's doing happening? A lot of moving around here. Yeah. Well, we've got we got a new uh, Kamoga splitter yesterday. Was, uh, yeah, which was a, an ordeal I heard. But to, Snips. Snips. to do that, to to in order to fit it in, we had to kind of revamp everything in in that shop area. So, consequently, it revamped things in other shop areas, and consequently, <laughs> it was revamping things in my shop. <laughs> There was a lot of consequential things. A lot of stuff, yeah. I almost got a big old splash of gum yeah. in my coffee. I got a little lid oh, you did. here. Thanks. It's got some in it and a little sponge even if you want to use that. That's cool. I wonder so, if gum tracks would be better than leather dust. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I guess it would just splash down to the bottom because it's thicker than water. That just... I mean, supposedly you can eat it. I don't know if this is food grade gum track, but like this is a just a thickener. We don't we don't <laughs> advise this. It's only, it only says keep from freezing. It doesn't say keep from eating. <laughs> Does not say do not consume. <laughs> Somebody let us know. Anybody eating leaving the gum track? Southern Council Federation of Fly Fishers Conclave in Mountain Home, Arkansas. You know where I was born, Denny? Mountain no, home, Arkansas. No. Yep. <laughs> Were you really? Yep. My wife was born in what was the name? Somewhere Mount near George, Arkansas. Her maiden name was George, and all her family lived around there. So hmm. they called the town. I don't know if it's even incorporated, but she said when she was a little girl, there used to be a little old country store. What there. needles did you all get here? Kind of stuff. The whole town. It was just her family? Well, there were <laughs> other families too, but, but her family was pretty prolific there, I guess. They were the Georges of the Mount yeah, George. The, yeah. They were the reason for the Mount George name. Sure. George is, not Georgia. This is what happens when Tony doesn't run the cameras. <laughs> no, you're doing fine. Abigail just got tired of listening to us, I think. <laughs> We're just going to use all of the ways to burnish edges today. So what, what kind of leather is this, Tony? What do we got here? I have no idea. Some sort of bridle. Yeah. Like a chestnut. It looks like a bridle to me. Or an English tan. It's actually a little light for a chestnut. Okay. English tan. Sounds great to me. Okay. I pulled it out of the scrap bins that we had in there. I just love a nice gum track finish. And so with this one, we split it down too. Because um, usually bridles will have a finished pasted back, but they're really heavy. So we split this one down. And just gum tracking the back of, of any of your veg tan. Just makes it feel really good, especially because these are going to be on a wrist. Um, just slicking down that back so that it's not not so rough. For those of you that have ever touched the back of a piece of Herman Oak, it's... It's like a it, cow tongue. Yeah, it's not <laughs> the most pleasant feeling. It's not one of my favorite things. Um, so just slicking that back down real good so that it's not uh, it's not rough. Just because Herman Oak, the grain is so tight that it is really, it's, it's almost sandpaper-like. It can be sometimes if the, the grain is tight enough. 
Um, so just giving that a little bit of moisture and gum tracking that down. Feels really good. All right. Yeah, and that's the reason you need to condition it. Yes. Know, after, because it's so dry that uh, all those, uh, all the little pores and stuff become sharp when you cut them in two, you know? Yes. Yeah. All right. So with this one, um, I left everything at full weight just because this is going to be holding the camera and I want everything to be nice and sturdy. So we're just going to fold that in. This is going to fold back up. But really, we kind of need... How's that coming, Lefty? I'm almost there. He's almost there. Okay, I can go ahead and... So we've just got that wedge between there. Does anybody have any favorite split key rings, if I'm making fancy key rock? Um, we sell a flat one, which is really nice. I did not use that for this because it would have been too big to loop into the tiny little um, metal piece that's on a camera. So I just used our regular key rings, which might be just kind of like the Walmart one. I haven't actually bought key rings at Walmart, so I don't know. Um, but we sell a nice flat one. I think, you know, if you look through Ohio Travel Bag or maybe the Buckle Guy, they might have some fancy versions as well. Um, but, so, but our, I like our flat ones. And we've got those in a couple different, uh, kind of more modern finishes. We've got like an antique brass, I think. There's an actual thread trying to push through the back of this. You can't hardly even see where you're pushing. Ooh, David Maybe. wants to know yeah. if we would make some moccasins. That actually sounds like a Clayton thing. Yeah. I made three or four pair of moccasins. And uh, moccasins are hard to do. Most people think they're a pretty simple deal. And there are some that are pretty straightforward and simple. Mm -hmm. But if you're wanting an actual outsole on them, you know, made out of leather, that, that increases the difficulty of it. We did, Clayton did that pattern here a couple of years ago. Um, let's see here. I'm actually going to mark through. And I don't, his didn't have an outer sole. Yeah. It just had the yeah, maybe in the future, in, sometime in the future, we'll do it. That'll probably be a two or three part series, I would think. Yeah. By the time we got everything cut and fit and stitched and recut and refit and stitched. <laughs> 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 Sounds like I'm going to be involved in that project. There's a lot of redoing stuff. Yeah. Marcus workshop so any news on an slc discord i'm not <laughs> sure what that question is that's a totally question yeah whenever darcy takes care of it discord is just another like social media type of platform but it's just us it's not controlled by really anything else people can ask questions on there we talked about making some um challenges and stuff like that on there so people would buy a little a pack that we would say that for them to get i don't know what it would be you know a little five dollar veg tan pack make this out of it winner gets some sort of prize whatever prize that is not sure what is happening here. so we're working on it marcus i'm punching through just one layer at a time because I don't want to have to pull this chisel out of three layers of, like, seven-ounce leather. Did you bring a thread burner in here? Ooh. I guess I know the answer sure to that. Sure didn't. Does Stacy have one on his desk? I can run and get one. Here you go. Give me an Andrew. Oh, Andrew's a leech. You get a little thread burn inside of there. We got her. All right. So now I've got my hole punches. We've got our keeper. So the keeper is going to slide on to these two this way. Right there. Very nice, Tony. 
Got our key ring. Put the key ring on. I've done worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then this will fold up. All right, so now we have to fill that. So I just did one stitch down the middle, so we'll probably just stitch over it and then stitch back. And double, double go there. And then, and then that will be that style. So this one, slip on your wrist. You can cinch this down. And then this hooks to the camera. Like your Wii controller. Yeah, like your, you can make fancy Wii controllers. Oh, there you go. Can have leather Wii straps. Is that still a thing? Do people still play that now that like, there's those other How about oh, other things oh those, those wings dividers are so tiny they're so cute they're my favorite thing i went over to denny and i was like i need your tiny adorable wing dividers and he knew just what i was talking about and, you know i don't remember where i got those but they're available look online look out look out they're they're just that big does it have any numbers on the side i of think them? they're they're a machinist tool so look under Machinist wing dividers, maybe. I was looking, because I need to order a new blade for my uh, my awl that I got from Crimson Hide. And I think that they had like a little mini wing divider that you could buy. And it wasn't very expensive, but I tried to buy, because since they're in Singapore, I tried to buy, you know, like a decent amount at a time just to make shipping worth it. So, are you ready? Mm. There you go. I don't know if they're all lined up. You might have to finagle that. Cool. Cool. You may step over here and you can work on the next yeah. one. Yeah. So he's going to sew that one up however he feels fit to do so. Down one line and back up the other. And then that one's done. Tony, you might want to look at the comments and stuff. How about the catalog? We don't want it. Not yet to be determined. Uh, so paper went up. Shipping we went did, up. We did... Um, you need to talk about it? No, I mean, <laughs> shipping and getting paper here is not the easiest. Yeah, it's becoming difficult. It's not the easiest, and that is the biggest thing. And it also went up by about mm, 10 grand for the same number of catalogs, yeah. same number of pages. Tell us about the, wing divi the tiny wing dividers that you're using. Well, we talked about them all day. So they are so cute, Eric. I agree. <laughs> we should find some of these. They're just awesome. And the after party situation. Tony has some actual work that he has to do today, so he just. <laughs> I do. We do. So this. Uh, I mean, I can just leave it on. We're not, I won't be in here. <laughs> you just watch an empty room. Um, so on Thursdays now, for you guys that don't know, we have been um, doing kind of like SLC live selling with um, odd lot stuff or just fun stuff that we find. Um, and and we're really, that takes a lot of work for us to do here because none of it has item numbers and we have to put in the orders. And if you guys don't have accounts, we have to create those. Anyways, so, so while it's awesome and we're really enjoying doing it, it just takes a lot of work on the back end. So we have to finalize our last week's stuff so that tomorrow isn't terrible. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did pick out some leather. Here it goes. Stacy and I either pick out leather or Liz helps me pick out leather. I put all the sheet together so we know what to do. Then I make the sales orders. Yeah. Then I have to call the people because I don't want them to put their three-digit uh, codes on and just emails out in the middle and, of the world. Yeah. Then I gather the order, then I take it back there to shipping, and then I give it to them to ship. So there is a lot involved in it. It's not a Thursday. No, it's like it takes like a whole week. So in any case, so lastly, we're going to be doing, um, this is different than the other ones. Basically, it will hook on to, hey, Denny found them on Amazon. And they are cheap, cheap. Toolmaker spring type <laughs> caliber divider. Ooh, $83. So you shouldn't, don't lose this. Put that in your pocket. <laughs> Just kidding. Get it back. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can buy those adorable wing dividers for $83 on Amazon. Woo! Let me see if there's any more. Um, so this one will only, so it has this pad that will go around the back of the hand. And you are holding the camera here. Um, we are going to make the strap, will loop through. Um, I'm gonna punch two slots in this. This bottom section here will have a tail that comes out with a bunch of different holes. 
And this actually literally screws in to the um, bottom side of your camera. So the mounting hole for you to mount it to a tripod. Um, the, I, there's, thumb screw. There's a, yeah, the, so the thumb screw will be adjustable for however loose or tight you want it around your hand. So we'll probably have like six or seven holes here. And then this side is going to loop around and have another key ring that will then loop onto your little ring side of the camera. So still pretty simple, but um, kind of unique and fun. So, and I did, I cut just one of our strap pads that I thought, and I have a narrower one. So we're going to make this one first, but then I might do this one. So same concept, but just a different design for that hand pad. So this strip is a five eighths inch strip. So I've got a five, oh, that's a little shallow. So we're gonna go ahead and use our three quarters. So I've got a three quarter inch um, oblong punch here, good old Osborne punch. So we are going to do this, hmm, be like three quarters of an inch from the end of each side here. Jimmy, but, someone has a question for you. It's the lap, the bottom one. No, I've never made a Dakota mountain set. I wouldn't know what that was. Send me a picture of it. He probably won't. Is it, is it an Australian type saddle? Razor blades from Australia, I believe. Yep. If I'm not mistaken. Well, that was Tim. That's his Razor blade. Oh, he's saying have a dogalog. Whatever that is. Dogalog. Uh, catalog, maybe. You're using all that Australian. Oh, maybe that's a dogalog instead of a catalog. Maybe. <laughs> By the way, I found another set of those wing dividers for $38. Mmm, nice. Man, you got something to pull this through? Alright. Oh, we're a little skinny to go up and back. There we go. Alright. So we've got... This guy here, I got him punched out, and this little strap is just six, about six inches long. So from end to end, we're about six inches, and then it is right at two inches wide for this little back of the hand strap. And then I cut three or two three-quarter inch um, oblong slots here on each end, about three-quarters of an inch from the end. Um, that this will run through. But once again, we're gonna bevel and burnish this strip because. <laughs> Always bevel and burnish your strips. They just, it just, it's nice. It feels good. <laughs> Let's see here. And then for this one, we just did some black, um, our finished black buffalo that we have, and then a piece of stone crazy horse buffalo for this combination because it looked cool. All right, there you go. Up and back. The holes were a little bit tight to go all the way up and back. But we made it. Latigo wants to know what is on tap for SLC shop live shopping tomorrow. We're going to figure that out this afternoon. I have some oil tans under there. I put together something kind of cool. Did you? When I was looking, when we were looking. Are you going to show people things? When we were looking through the buffalo. What do you think about doing a pack of just some inch and a half blanks, belt blanks of buffalo? We could do that. They're nine to ten ounce. Make you a quick and... Snazzy belt. All right. Two down. What's our time here, Tony? One, oh, 149. 11.49. I think this is probably the fastest we've ever made anything. We've already made two things. I know. <laughs> and we haven't Oh, do you want to show them? Did you show them that? I did, yep. Okay. Good job. Look at you. Um, once again, I'm going to cut my end punches. I'm going to burnish your edges just a little bit. That's it. I was, I was kind of quick about it, so. I know, you were busy talking about Legos. Well, I really don't have 
have anything else to talk about. I can talk about my dogs. Someone built a uh, Lego dragon at the fair. Did they really? Yeah. That's they awesome. Some some young. I could enter Legos into the fair. You sure you can? What? You, you that got categories <laughs> for everything. What? They'd probably go in the quilting department. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm sure you could. What what category were they entered in? Uh, I don't know. It was it was in a, a youth category of some sort because it was a young student did it. So. I'm fascinated by this fair competition. Yeah. yeah. All right. So one end we're going to bevel or skive down um, because it's going to fold back and then rivet on itself. But this other end we're just going to leave full length because, like I said, I'm just going to punch holes in it. Danny, I have not been to the fair in like a decade. <laughs> I haven't either, but and you still haven't. <laughs> no, I still haven't. <laughs> but well, since I was a judge, they gave me two free tickets and even a free parking pass. Nice. To to the fair, it's so. so expensive to go to the fair. Are you judging this year? Yeah, yes, I judged oh. the I judged the letter competition. I did that yesterday. Oh, did you miss that? We just talked about that. Yeah, were you not here? Mm -mm. Where were you? He's probably adjusting cameras. Off in my own little land. You said something about it, but I didn't realize you were a judge. I thought, I thought, I, I don't know what I thought. I didn't think anything. Probably. Probably I wasn't thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we've got that in sky, but though it, yeah, you know what? Who you won? Everyone that entered. <laughs> oh. Seriously. <laughs> You weren't here at all, were you? No, I can't. Everybody won? Everybody. There were 25 entries, and, and I would say there were that many different categories. Wow. So everyone won a blue ribbon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 25 categories, and we had 25 people in. There we go. That's nice. You want to edge that for me? Yeah. And I will do this one, because okay. I still need to bevel this one. Sorry, I took your... My lid. What if I sand that down? Oh, it's pretty smooth. Yeah. Nice buffalo. I really like this denim mm -hmm. stuff, and that's what most of the strips I cut out for tomorrow it's stone. were. Stone. No. Oh, yeah, I did. I did give you stone. Yeah, it's stone. You can only tell because one's blue on the back and one's gray, kind of look on the back. Yeah. Otherwise, they do look very similar on the front. <laughs> Until you get to pull up. Yeah, that the crazy horse and all of our new colors that we, well, I guess we've had them for a little while, but I like them a lot. I think we're supposed to be getting some samples of some Italian veg. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. I thought we were supposed to be getting it. They're making the numbers. Um, I think Andrew ordered some. Oh, I think maybe they were sending pallets and samples at the same time. Mm. So here's your pallets. You're going to love it. Oh, and it's also going to come with your samples. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, it's getting hard to ship things across the seas. I listened to a podcast the other day. I do too. About abandoned cargo ships. So apparently, um, if like smaller shipping companies, if they run out of money because they operate on such low profit margins mm -hmm. and they don't have enough to like pay the port fees... They will abandon their ships and their crews in the ocean on their ships. Crew and all? Yeah, because the crew can't get paid if they get off the boat. So they have to stay there un until the company pays them. Because if they get off the boat, then they forfeit their paycheck for like the last seven months. It's the craziest thing I'd ever never heard of. Ever never heard of. <laughs> ever never heard of. I know where my oven is now. In an abandoned cargo ship somewhere. Yeah. Well, and apparently... Well, I don't know. This is getting into a lot. But there was some ship that was abandoned that had a bunch of explosives on it. Oh, that's good. And um, it sank because they stopped maintaining it and the crew left. Um, and then it, it blew up in Beirut. And so uh, I, I don't know when it was, but apparently there was like a huge explosion in Beirut and like blew up the, the port and like a whole bunch like inward. I don't know when that happened. I feel like I should have looked it up a little bit more before I brought it up here and just started talking about it. <laughs> this is just making up this stuff. Could, yeah, this could just be a figment. No, I, I mean, that, that's real. <laughs> I just don't know when it happened. But anyways, I had no... That's just... 
the world is a crazy place. That, that's, that's what I learned when I listened to podcasts. I didn't know that you just, you just abandon it. And then it's international waters. So like nobody owns it. So nobody does anything oh, with that's it. Amazing. And the port doesn't, or like the, the port that it's going to doesn't necessarily want to deal with it. Well, oh, this is the craziest do, thing I ever heard of. Do the pirates know about all this? Well, so the reason that they were interviewing, so they're the dude and his job is to literally like provide these people that are abandoned in the middle of the ocean with like supplies to keep living. So like he takes. Who pays for the supplies? I don't, I don't know how this works. Maybe, I don't, mercenaries or missionaries. Or, <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know how that them as well. They may be taking the ship though. <laughs> What? Who's Maybe. been bringing you food? All oh, these very nice mercenaries that have just come in and given us rock donuts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just so people I don't I don't know. It's crazy. That's all I know. It sounds crazy. <laughs> the mercenary. <That's> it. <laughs> sounds Listen here. Sounds like an adventure. They have this right at Disney. <laughs> it's um Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, we're just not watching anything up oh. there. <laughs> Sorry, we're burnishing. we're burnishing. Well, they can see us up in the little picture and picture in the little one. Otherwise, you guys can just stare at our beautiful tool. Unorganized now, which is making me anxious. Yeah. There you are. Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back. The larger versions of ourselves. Yeah. How's it going? Is it beautiful? Are you happy with it? I'm I'm good with it. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. I got I need to go get a thumb screw though. Thumb screw. Mm. Yeah, I brought hopefully this hole punch is big enough. I brought this guy, which is a four millimeter, I'm assuming, because it says point four, and that's it. <laughs> So hopefully that one's big enough. Marcus, can you tell us what four millimeters is in the standard? He's from Germany. They probably need to go I think can you the, please translate for us? Because we I, can't do it ourselves. I think we're the only ones that use. All right. So these edges feel really good. Really, this whole video is just about beveling and burnishing your edges and how important it is to make a nice product. That feels good. Mm. All right. You could probably use a bigger one. Mm, yeah. Well, we do. There's a rotary punch, but I don't know how large it goes. That's a three sixteenths. That's a little bit bigger. Yeah, by an eighth. Okay, that should work. I don't know. I don't know how much four millimeters is. All right. About so we've got this. Bigger. Oh man, can you go back to the overhead? Mm -hmm. So he burnished this up all nice, and then check this out. Can you see that? Oh, nice. Can you see that? I like that. I love this crazy horse. And then, then you can kind of burnish it back in. And then, whoosh. anyways. <laughs> Sound effects are the best. Exactly. She was not making any noises with her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, once again, it's really simple, but it's just a really cool idea. So we're just going to put the key ring there, and then we're just going to punch holes mm -hmm. through here. And then it'll just hook onto the camera. I guess, think, I think I have it upside down. Yeah. yeah. Now you're talking. Now I'm talking. All right. So I'm another key ring. Either. Trigger snap for that one? No. I got I got a really big, huge black one. We have the little tiny. No, we're not going to use. We're not going to use the big black one. We're not. We talked. We we'll just put it, Tony. Look how cool this thing is. So we are working on some black hardware. Abigail is not nearly as fast with this camera. She's as... looking at her phone. So we've got some black hardware in the works. We are super excited about it for like the last three weeks between oh me and Clayton and Tony. We've um, we've attempted to use it on many videos, but it's just not quite ready yet. And so we didn't want to get you guys all excited. But here we are going to get you guys all excited about some hardware that should be almost ready. Except for somebody needs to take pictures of it. Except for somebody needs to get take the pictures. Out in the middle of the ocean somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No, it's already here. It is here. We have it here. This one's 5'8". How big is your strap? Uh, five eight. Wow, it fit in there perfect. It's like they were meant to be. It's so, and it's like three inches long. It's just, just too big. Uh, the, I mean, the snap is. It's too big. It's as big as the side of the camera. This is but... why I didn't want to use it because I told him I was just going to say it's too big a million times until he shut up about it. 
<laughs> if you two are going to fight, um, you're going to have to one on each side of me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're just going to rivet on one of these videos coming soon. We're going to use some fabulous black hardware, and we're all going to be really excited about it. And they have, we have black belt buckles. We got a lot of hardware. That Kindle, I'm sure, is really excited to put in bins so that we can gather it, it when you bins. order it. It is in bins. It's just not located. Or photographed. Boom. I Rivet just set. showed him one. I just showed him one. Yeah, photographs on his picture coming soon. Picture? <laughs> you don't need to see this. Just read about it. All you, right. You may bring a camera over here. You're going to do them about a half inch apart? Three yeah. eighths? Well, I, this is my center line. Mm. Okay. So. Should be centered. It's not. Nope, it's not. So I'm going to start here. And then we'll do three eighths because I feel like a half inch is kind of maybe a little long. Although this is a really big hole in it. Yeah. I mean, we have this. We have the 316th here, but it may still be a little bit small yeah. just because of the threads. We'll do a half. If we do that 316th and just hammer it in a little bit further and cut a hole in our poly as well, then it'll be big enough. Okay. That should be pretty good. What's I don't know if camera three works, Abigail. It's really hard to see the punch because it's black and then the leather is really dark. How's this whole, how's this do? Does it, oh yeah, it's going to fit through there. I mean, you don't have to thread it, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Make sure your leather has threads. <laughs> you know, luckily leather is soft enough that it can kind of just thread itself. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I cannot see this. Do you mean you shine a light on it for you? You may hold it for it and then you can hit it. What? Oh, pieces are flying out. And I think probably this would be the most expensive one that you would charge for. A little bit more time, a little bit more leather. You gotta cut. Two pieces instead of one. Well, I guess that other one had a keeper, but... Uh, Less hardware. Yep. One had two rivets. This one just has one rivet. And the other one had no rivets. That's the deal breaker there, the two rivets. I know. It just puts it over the top, puts it to the next... <laughs> All right. Tax bracket. Would this Italian <laughs> veg happen to be that? No, it wouldn't. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I know. Mm. Nope. All right. So there we go. We've got this. Were you going to get a camera? Oh, I got... Which one would you like me to choose from? Uh, whichever one is the best one. The best? Maybe not the best one. Maybe the worst one. Because we should leave the best one on. <laughs> all right. It. Let's put it on all three of them and we'll just have the overhead camera. I'll we'll worry about this a little later. There's another... Comment, highlighted comment on. Uh, what does the highlighted comment mean? Hey gang, Jeremy here. Aaron, <laughs> Skyler, and Jeff. We'll let them know. The amazing JB. I don't know who he is. All right. All right. So I feel like this one is the the most abstract of the ones that we've made. Oh, this one would be the quickest one to put on. Yeah. Let's do it first. Okay. And done. <laughs> so this is what ours looks like there. And I, I wonder if this would be, do you think that's small enough to actually just clip to the camera? No, probably not. No, it wouldn't go in no. there. So You're not. You're just... I know. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Can you hit off on the picture? picture? <laughs> or just see me twice? <laughs> Yeah. So just kind of hang from your wrist. Yeah. That's nice. Looks cool. Looks good. 
Functional. Easy peasy. Bam. Okay. Okay. And then, oh, I hate, I should have brought. So on the bead side, we sell a key ring opener. It's this little plier that has like this little claw tooth on it that literally splits open your key ring for you. And with the little tiny ones, it's nice, especially on the bead side, but also just with any, especially if you don't have a nail. It has like, yeah, it has like this little tooth that opens it up. It's nice. I've been known to use a needle. Well, well, if I didn't have a thumbnail. Yeah, if I had those, I would use it. Same type of deal, just a different... You just scooch that up. And camera strap. Oh, I'm a tourist. You know, so for me, I really like... Rivets are nice and they're pretty straightforward, obviously, to put in. But I really like the idea of sewing the camera straps just so that you don't have to worry about any hardware failure. Right, because um, I'm... Cause these are expensive. I'm trusting just my leather here. This, I'm yep. trusting on that not to fail. Exactly, exactly. So if, you know, we were doing... I would probably hand sew all three of these if I were to be making them for sale. And not um, in an hour? And yeah, and not in an hour. Um, I would I would hand sew all of these just so that you have that added security. Sewing is just ideal. Then that's, that's the leather that would have to literally rip for for it to come apart. To have a come apart, yeah, that happens sometimes. That's not good. You don't you don't want your camera strap to fail, or your person to have a come apart. Yeah, you want your people to stay together. Not them <laughs> actually come. Apart. More of an emotional status there. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh look, I can't put it on there because I already have a tripod foot on there. What is this called again? A thumb screw, a thumb and screw. they are certain sizes. Photographers will know. Why, or if you want to sell, or if you're looking for one and you need it, you can look up tripod thumb screw. Can you buy them at the hardware store, or do you? Is it specific for cameras? You might be able to find them at the hardware store. I've never looked for them at the hardware okay. store, but. Yeah, I'm going to need some more holes. Oh, so maybe that's a little long? A little long. Okay. And if we didn't, if we did it... Oh, a smaller key ring. Yeah. Hey, Abigail? Mm -hmm. Can you switch to that top camera? So if this was a little bit smaller, and that smaller one where it pulled it up and around just a little bit more... Yeah. Then it's going to hold it on my hand, but let's go to the last hole there. You, I think you get the idea. Or you want to put another hole? I can, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Oh, just gonna, just gonna eyeball it. Your right. wing divider's still set up. Who cares? We're good. Let the swing test commence. Here we go. Now I gotta unthread my screw from the left. But you do want that to be pretty, you don't want that to be a loose oh, yeah. hole. Don't be loosey goosey. Yeah, no loosey goosey. I think this is the most project we've done in one, except for when we did earrings. I did a lot of earrings that day. We're pretty ambitious. Oh, do you know when, guess when we thought up this idea to do camera straps and got all the straps we were going to do? About 3.30 yesterday, I think it was. <laughs> Where can I find patterns and info on draft dog harness? Hmm. Is I, I've seen I know a draft horse. I've never heard of a draft dog. Yeah, that's gonna have to be. We need something to pull that up and around just a little bit more. Oh, because that's just sitting on your hand. Yeah, the ring part of it sitting on my hand. But it's gotcha. under sled dog supplies, maybe. Yeah. But that's kind of cool. Yeah. So That's really, neat. getting that smaller like key ring seems like it's going to be the the ticket there, so it pulls it up and around. Mm -hmm. But in any case, there you go. Yeah, not bad at all. All right. Anybody have any other questions? I mean, I feel like we just sat here and just did a little bit of crafting with some straps. <laughs> People just watched. You did all wrist straps too. All wrist straps. So I think yeah. we have we have one complicated next strap that needed more planning than what we had time 
three hours of yeah. planning. So next week we'll be doing a nice padded neck strap. Yeah, we're gonna um, make a, Liz was trying to make a pattern this morning and I was like, look, I had those wristlets. Let's just do the wristlets thing instead of trying to make up a pattern then make it for the first time online. So yeah, so I'm gonna be working this week and we'll do a nice fancy, I'm gonna use some of that Hermano heritage. It'll be padded um, and then some adjustment straps mm -hmm. down on the end that we'll use button studs. So we're gonna do that next week. Um, Denny on Friday is going to do the fly wallet. Yeah. Okay. Book? Is so, that what you call it? You call it a book? A fly book, fly wallet, whatever you It's going to house some flies for your fishing. Yeah. For wet flies. If you're a fly fisherman, you know what we're talking about. You're I not am not, so fisherman. I have no idea. I just like dead flies. Yeah, me dead too. Dead flies. Okay. It'll house those too. <laughs> <laughs> what, okay, well, what's the difference? Is that after you've already uh, thrown it in the water? A and dry you... fly, a dry fly, you fish on top of the water. It floats, mm -hmm. so you can see a trout come up and just wow. grab it. And a wet fly actually sinks, and you fish it under the water. Did they need to sit in there to dry off? I don't think it has anything no. to actually do. But with a dry, a dry fly, <laughs> a dry fly, you need to take a little more care with because it has. Wings and and some of them have different type of animal hair that you don't want to crush and get all out. Of Doesn't Spencer do fly? He I'm said that he sure. did because he was tying all those knots mm -hmm. and he said, yeah. "I do." I wonder if he has any flies we could borrow for Friday. I've got a bunch. Denny oh, probably Denny got has all the flies. Denny has Maybe all Spencer the flies. Could tie a fly. Yeah. I hope we'll get a pattern for that. Super <laughs> interested on what we're doing Friday. Probably not what we did today. <laughs> Who, I mean, they may want a pattern for this. These are complicated wrist straps. Um, but they really want some black hardware for Yeah, them. I'm sure Denny will have some awesome paper patterns that he'll cut yeah. out and that we could scan in and uh, give to you guys. We'll see you, what we do. You'll can have do. to get the instructions from the video, though. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. were, you were right, Denny, about big, big dogs, large European breeds that pull small carts. I would say that's something you would probably have to fabricate yourself. I doubt there are any patterns. I've never out seen there. anything yeah. for that. I'm sure they have. It'd be similar to some other dog harnesses, but I don't know how they pull. If they pull on the front, where all the rings go, and how you make sure that you I was got the size to a dog. I mean, if it's something that you want to start making to make them, you might, if there are any that you could buy out there. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be expensive, but then you buy one and you figure out where everything needs to, to sit. Yep. That's what I would do. When is Denny making a fly rod tube? Razor blade, it's still in the works. One of these days. One That's all I can tell days. you. All right. So that's to be determined. <laughs> oh, maybe we have to make our wet fly book. Then we can make a clip on it, or it can have a wrist strap, so you can clip it to your... Fly rod too. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on that. All right, everybody. All right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow if you join us for the live <laughs> shopping. Friday, if you just said, screw those guys tomorrow, I have a life. And you're just going to join us on Fridays. <laughs> some good stuff underneath there. Oil tan, yeah. some embossed stuff. We'll find some other, some belt blanks. It's going to be great. Some other veg. Maybe pull a, a bundle of Kevin's. Shh. Okay. See we'll you guys. See you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, hold on.